Hello, I'm Jim Morningstar, Director of In Wellness. Today's Life in Wellness series topic is Transcending, the twelfth and final area of our wellness wheel. Transcending, which implies genuine growth, is more than going beyond or escaping what was. It involves learning and incorporating from the past and building upon it. This is a true integration that is a platform for evolving rather than just abandoning all that came before. The final transcending leap of faith has had preparatory steps that allow the new heights to be reached, but also new roots to be grown. This affects a permanent change rather than a temporary high followed by a resounding crash. Our work in this class will allow us to strengthen those preparatory steps to our personal transcending on the physical, emotional, mental, as well as spiritual levels. Here are some of the wellness wheel thoughts on transcending. Transcending has many faces, including the experience of peak performance, of how being in the zone is an experience of being fully awake and engaged in the present moment. It is the moment of overcoming, of crossing the invisible barrier from protecting to learning, from contracting to expanding, from saying no to life to saying yes. This is the dimension of faith and spirituality and of experiencing our connection to something greater than ourselves. This knowledge and experience inspires both love and self-responsibility, which takes us back full circle in a never-ending spiral of wellness. As Albert Einstein has noted, the most beautiful experience we can have is the mysterious. Let's review some of the vital tenets we have covered on this wellness journey that will help us in our integration and transcending. First, being aware that your beliefs and assumptions color your experience. The wellness energy system is in large part founded on the connection between our thoughts, the reality we create in our minds, and the subsequent conditions that manifest in our body. When we highlighted the wellness topic of thinking, the issue of the reality molding power of our thoughts was first developed. Here it's taken to another level. The premise that we do not live in a single, fixed, Newtonian universe receives strong support from the most unlikely quarters, the laboratories of the subatomic particle physicists. From them, we are finding out that our old concepts of hard and fast objective realities are simply not true. According to Einstein's model of the universe, time actually slows down as an object's speed increases, and light travels in curves. The new physics based on quantum mechanics demonstrates that a subatomic particle emitted when an atom is split is not even a thing. It's merely a, a tendency to exist. And that's not possible to observe reality without changing it. Heisenberg said the term happens is restricted to the reality of the observer. What he meant is that there is no reality apart from our observations, evaluations, and judgments about it. A doesn't strike B in a void. It strikes B with the awareness of an observer. Otherwise, we wouldn't even know about it. Furthermore, not only does the observer's skill, computer programming ability, and visual or auditory acuity affect the report, his or her very presence has an impact on the process. The observer's energy field is interacting with and thus changing the energy field of the whole system. It follows then that you are more than a bystander. You have a definite part in structuring your own life, in creating your own reality. This view that our energy patterns influence reality and that our thoughts actually create reality has been incorporated into the medical practices and educational approaches of many reputable professionals. Neurofeedback, which evolved from biofeedback, as well as mental imagery, 
guided relaxation, and verbal suggestion are just a few of the techniques that are being used to relieve stress conditions in the body. In the end, it is love that heals. And what keeps us from loving and creates imbalance and disease in the body are our fear, our attack thoughts, and our unacknowledged anger. Change your view of reality, and reality itself will change. Secondly, consciously participating in your own healing process when you are ill or out of balance. If you can accept or even entertain the possibility that everything is connected because everything is one, you are immediately presented with alternatives that may significantly affect your life and health. In the early 1970s, neurosurgeon Norman Shealy began documenting cases in which psychic healing methods succeeded in both diagnosis and treatment where traditional medical practice had failed. While the term psychic healing was objectionable to many then, the activities associated with these methods have become strongly legitimized in the past 20 years. Shealy's work was dramatically augmented in the 1980s and 90s with the collaboration of Carolyn Meese, a medical intuitive, who began to share her expertise with him with a 95% of accuracy. A medical intuitive is a person who sees or knows by some inner sense what the psychophysical condition of another is. In the moment of sensing, the intuitive recognizes that he or she is not separate from the one being examined. The intuitive can then speak from what she sees and feels within herself and can translate that sensing into precise diagnostic terminology that relates to the condition of the other. Together, Sheely and Mies presented their work in the groundbreaking book, The Creation of Health, which articulated their energy model of health and disease. They found a particular pattern of energy loss associated with every illness they examined, and they described how various stresses led to these diseases. Mies has gone on to publish many other books, including The Anatomy of Illness, all of which have been New York Times bestsellers. This view of the world may cause discomfort with our traditional way of seeing reality. Sometimes humor can dissipate a part of that discomfort. Woody Allen, for example, quipped, There's no question that there is an unseen world. The problem is, how far is it from Midtown and how late is it open? The age-old understanding that all forms of life are different expressions of the same energy is the basis of the whole energy field medicine that distinguishes the work of many alternative practitioners today. In the past 30 years, physicians Brew Joy and Richard Moss and others have trained thousands of health professionals to sense body energy fields and to use a variety of methods, some of which are like laying on of hands, to alter these energy fields and thus affect healing. Nursing teacher Dolores Krieger inaugurated a program called Therapeutic Touch, whereby caregivers learning to massage the energy field of the patient to relieve pain and discomfort as well as the emotional disconnection that causes so much suffering in those who are ill. Therapeutic touch, healing touch, and other touch and massage methods have become standard procedures in hospice programs and are currently taught in nursing schools throughout the country. One of the most remarkable rediscoveries by science in recent years, the power of prayer in healing, is further testimony to the connectedness of all things. For those who believe in and practice prayer, all beings and all circumstances are seen as interrelated. People throughout the world do pray for health and healing, and have always done so. Whether from the perspective that God's help is available to those who ask, or from a non-theistic viewpoint that merit, a term used by Buddhists, and or energy can be shared. Vast numbers pray for themselves and for the benefit of others. The fact that prayer works 
can be scientifically verified was brought to the attention by Larry Dossey, MD, in 1993, with the publication of his book, Healing Words. Because he began his own investigation in the 1980s somewhat skeptically, Dossey was surprised to learn that dozens of highly controlled studies about the efficacy of prayer had already been conducted. Over half of them strongly indicated that prayer was a significant factor in the patient's healing. In one of the most remarkable studies, prayer was tested with heart patients in a modern hospital. The group that were prayed for, even without knowing it, recovered more completely and with fewer complications than the unprayed for control group. The subject of prayer brings us into a vast domain of faith, belief, religion, and spirituality. What we are talking about here as we consider wellness and transcendence is the way in which our thoughts, which include our beliefs, connect us within a web of relatedness far greater than our immediate circumstances might indicate. So God or spirit or universal energy are some names we assign to this vast web. In the field of grief counseling, pioneering researcher Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross found that people with some religious faith, which essentially translate to some view of reality that transcends their own personal control and management, dealt with their grief far more successfully than those who had no religion or spirituality in their lives. And more recently, from the National Institute of Healthcare Research in Rockville, Maryland, Dr. David B. Larson unhesitatingly reports, statistically, God is good for you. Gary Zukoff relates in the Dancing Wu Li Masters, reality is what we take to be true. What we take to be true is what we believe. What we believe is based on our perceptions. What we perceive depends on what we look for. What we look for depends on what we think. What we think depends on what we perceive. What we perceive determines what we believe. What we take to be true is our reality.